So this is lesson 1.2, answers. So I'm just gonna start with number six. The directions say to find the measurement of each segment. Assume that each figure is not drawn to scale. I drew all of the images for us. This is really what your homework should look like. Um, if you don't draw the pictures, you definitely should show your work. Just throwing an answer up there is not acceptable. Take a look at your class syllabus, okay? I know that you can do it in your head. I get that but you gotta show me some work. So number six, um, drawing the segment, I said that RS equals four minus 1.6. So RS equals 2.4 centimeters. Number seven, drawing the segment, I see that B is between C and D. If CB is 2X, BD is 4X, and BD is also 12, that means that 4X must equal 12, which means that X equals three. Plugging that back into CB, I find out that CB equals six. Number eight, CB equals 4X minus nine, BX equals 3X plus five, and CD equals 17. Well, I know from the law of betweenness, since these three points are collinear, that CB plus BD equals CD. So I solve and I find out that X equals three. Plug that back in to find the value of CB. I find out that CB also has a value of three. All right, number nine. Just has a picture of the um, Indiana state flag and it asks you to list all of the congruent segments from the figure. So segment AG is congruent to segment FG, segment BG is congruent to segment EG, and segment CG is congruent to segment CD. Yes, you have to put it, when you use congruent, the symbol congruent, you have to make sure that you have a bar over your segments. So if your answer doesn't look like mine, you need to make sure that you're aware of that. Segment bars when we use congruent. Number 14, you're given the figure, you know that G is in between E and F, so um, the law of betweenness or segment addition, you'll later find out. EF equals EG plus GE, EF equals 2.5 plus 2.8, I'm just using substitution, EF equals 5.3 inches. If you didn't use your units, Inches, if you forgot inches, make sure you add that when you're checking your homework, okay? Um, I'm making a point to say these things because I would take off a half a point on a quiz if you didn't label your units. Number 15, I'm looking for the measurement of JL. So JL equals JK plus KL. JL equals 0.75 plus 0.35. I find out that JL equals 1.1 centimeters. Number 16, I'm looking for the measurement of PR. I know that PS equals PR plus RS. 5.8 equals PR plus 3.7. Subtract 3.7 from both sides and I find out that PR equals 2.1 millimeters. Number 17, SV plus VT equals ST, SV plus 2.6 equals 4.1, SV equals 1.5 inches. Number 18, notice the red mark, or actually in the book it's pink, notice the pink marking on segment WY and segment YX. That means that they're congruent. So it means that their measures are equal. So just so I make sure that you guys understand, this means congruence. That means that WY, segment WY is congruent to segment YX. But we learned in our notes that congruent segments have equal measures, okay? If the segments are congruent, that means that their measures are equal. So that means that WY equals YX, 
So wx equals wy plus yx. But since wy and yx equal each other, I can take this value and substitute it in right here. So now I have wx equals wy plus wy. Well, wy plus wy is 2wy. Divide both sides by 2. So I find out that wy equals 4.4 millimeters. Now, yes, I'm sure that you could have looked at that and just divided it in half. I'm just trying to show you algebraically and geometrically why we're able to set that up that way. Number 19, same thing, those congruent marks. Um, those segment marks represent congruence, those little red lines. So I find out that Fg equals 4.2 centimeters. Fg equals 4.2 centimeters. All right, number 22. Number 22, you're finding the value of the variable and yz. So number 22, I set up that xz equals xy plus yz. I solve for b, b equals 12.5. Plug that back in to find yz, yz equals 100. Number 24, I solve for d, d equals two. Plug that back in to find yz, y yz equals 16. Number 26, I solve for A, A equals six. Plug that back in and find that YZ equals 38. Number 32, you're looking at um, segments and actually these are coordinate grids. So we're talking about distance from zero, right? So if we go from here to here, that distance is two A and this distance right here is 3a. 2a plus 3a is 5a. Same thing vertically, if you're looking at this distance to zero, this distance right here is 4a, this distance is a, 4a plus a is 5a. So yes, segment vt is congruent to segment su. Um, those are types of questions that you'll see for sure um, like definitely um, maybe um, a PSAT or an SAT question because they want to make sure that you guys understand distance and how it works on a coordinate grid. Um, visually, it looks like they should be congruent, but they're not always going to be set up visually, okay? Number 33 is the picture of the struts inside of like um, a bridge or the roof of a house. So you have to name all the segments that are congruent. So here goes. Segment AB is congruent to segment BC, is congruent to segment CD, is congruent to segment DE, is congruent to segment DG, is congruent to segment BG, is congruent to segment CG. Those are all of the blue segments in my picture. Then I marked all the, um, then I named all of the red segments. So segment H, AH is congruent to segment HG, is congruent to segment GF, is congruent to segment FE. These are all of the red segments. And then I did all the green segments. Segment BH is congruent to segment DF. But then I realized that this whole segment right here, segment AG, or sorry, segment AC is congruent to this segment right here which is segment CE. So this is yellow. And lastly, I don't know if I can change the color anymore or not. Lastly, I said that this segment right here, AG, is congruent to this segment right here, GE, which is also congruent to this segment right here, which is HF. So that's this. Alrighty, moving along. <clears throat> Number 35, if you did not have a ruler, you could guesstimate or you could use a piece of notebook paper and just mark sides and slide it around. Your answers are probably very different than mine. You have to name just five pairs, so there could be multiple answers. 
I said congruent segments were BD, segment BD is congruent to segment CE, segment BD is congruent to segment PQ, segment YZ is congruent to segment JK, segment PQ is congruent to segment RS, and segment GK is congruent to segment KL. Again, your answers may be different than mine. Number 51 is the pendulum of a um, clock. The formula for the period in seconds is P equals two times pi times the square root of L over 32, where L is the length of the pendulum in feet. So question A says, what is the period P if the clock shown of the clock shown in seconds to the nearest tenth. So remember that L has to be in feet. So the first thing that I did was I turned 42 inches into feet. So if you did not do that, your answer is going to be incorrect. P equals two times pi times the square root of 3.5 divided by 32. So when you multiply that out, you find out that P equals 2.077, I think there was a nine after that, but it said to the nearest tenth, so that's about 2.1 seconds. Question B says, about how many inches long should the pendulum be in order for it to have a period of one second? So that means we're gonna replace P with a one. So that's what I've done here. So one equals two pi times the square root of L, I'm trying to find the length, over 32. So the first thing that I did was divide both sides by two pi, and then I squared it to get rid of the radical. Doing that, I have one over four pi squared equals L divided by 32. I multiplied both sides by 32, and I find out that L equals eight divided by pi squared. And when you take eight and divide it by pi squared, you get about 0.8, but that's in feet. That's in feet, because remember, L is the length of the pendulum in feet, and question B asks me how many inches long it should be. So I have to take that 0.8 of a foot and multiply it by 12, because there are 12 inches in a foot, and I find out that it is about 9.7 inches. All right, numbers 52, 54, and 55, those are just review. Um, solving inequalities, number 52, n is less than or equal to negative three. Number 54, a is greater than negative 12.5. And number 55, x is less than or equal to negative 13. The important thing to remember here is that when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. Again, when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. All right? So next I want you to send me a message. Actually, there's um, a, like a Canvas quiz that just asks you, the next page says, how many questions did you miss on your 1.2 homework? What were they? So fill that out for me, let me know how you did.